Well, this is so exciting to um, have you all join us again today. And we're going to be talking about a really hot topic about functional neurological disorders and more specifically functional movement disorders during the pandemic. There's been an increased sort of uh, um, attention focused on this at the American Academy of Neurology. There were some presentations on um, tick disorders that were functional that had arisen during the pandemic. So we're just so excited to have my co-host, uh, Catherine Lefebvre, Dr. Catherine Lefebvre join us from Saratoga Springs, uh, New York. And she's a movement disorder neurologist in private practice there. And she's uh, found um, an amazing uh, speaker today that we will both interview on um, uh, this topic, uh, uh, Dr. David Perez. Uh, Catherine, do you want to tell us why you chose David and um, why he's joining us today? Yeah, well, I'm very, very pleased to, to have David join us today. David is um, one of the prominent main, uh, really, researcher and clinician on the topic of functional neurologic disorders. He's a certified psychiatrist and neurologist and the leader of the FND research study group at Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston. So couldn't couldn't have a better person. And we, we had the pleasure of co-editing a book together on uh, integrative treatment approaches to functional uh, movement disorders. So welcome, David. Wonderful to be here with both of you. Thank you for having me. Well, David, maybe we can start with just learning a little bit about functional neurological disorders and uh, more specifically functional movement disorders. Tell us about that. Sure. So functional neurological disorder, which we'll abbreviate as FND, is a condition that lives at the intersection of neurology and psychiatry. And there are, there are a variety of ways that patients with FND can present. They can exhibit abnormal movements, seizure-like events, non-dermatomal sensory deficits, cognitive symptoms, dizziness. There is now a rule and approach to use physical examination signs to distinguish FND from other neurologic conditions. And we can think of functional movement disorder as one of the main subtypes of functional neurological disorder. Catherine, maybe you could tell us a little bit about something that every neurologist should know about um, functional movement disorders. Yeah, I'd be happy to. So I think in general, I would say every neurologist really needs to be familiar with how FND can present and, and really how to get patients to a diagnosis. And unfortunately, traditionally, there's been a bit of a reluctance for, for many neurologists to actually make the diagnosis because of a certain discomfort level. Many neurologists feel they don't really know about the topic, don't really uh, know how to help patients. And it often leads to a significant delay in diagnosis and therefore to delay in care. And as David was saying, you know, this kind of rule in approach and really looking for the positive signs, the typical examination features and whether that is an abnormal uh, tremor that is very variable or untrainable. So there's lots of literature on this available now. So really, uh, people do need to educate themselves. And uh, it should also be really an uh, integral uh, part of uh, neurology residencies uh, to make neurologists very familiar with the diagnosis and treatment of these conditions. And, uh, you know, as always for our neurologic patients, it's very important to get a psychosocial history because these disorders really live in sort of a bio psychosocial you know borderland we, we need to have uh, consider um, all these factors to understand why people get um, FND and to help them move forward so uh, communication uh, many many things are really important but yeah understanding how to diagnose how to communicate a diagnosis uh, and then develop a treatment plan are all very important so interesting. I mean, I think that so many disorders are in this sort of borderland. As Parkinson's neurologists, we see so many things that are the, at this intersection of psychiatry and neurology. And I think, you know, this multidisciplinary team approach is just so important. And David, you're really well trained to do that because you're, I guess, uh, both a neurologist and a psychiatrist. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about um, the treatments that are available for um, FND, as we're, we're referring to it, the functional neurological disorders. David. Sure. It's a great question. And maybe I'll just start also by highlighting for our audience, in terms of functional movement disorders, there are a range of phenotypes. So patients can present with tremor, with limb weakness, with dystonia, with ticks or jerks, with difficulty with walking. If you extend the spectrum, patients may also exhibit uh, speech output difficulties. And as Catherine nicely pointed out, we really want to take an integrated approach to the assessment one that emphasizes the core neurologic features to guide diagnosis, but one that also helps put the patient in context using the biopsychosocial model, ultimately to help guide uh, the patient to 
um, the most evidence-based treatment within the various moving parts that relate to their own personal equation for developing functional neurological disorder. So what are the mainstays of treatment? For a functional movement disorder, the mainstays of treatment include physical rehabilitation and psychotherapy. There's been a lot of work done by a range of leaders internationally in this area. I think for our audience, the key feature to highlight is that there are now consensus recommendations for physical therapy, for occupational therapy, and for speech and language, each published in the JNNP. And this is a great guide for um, physical rehabilitation experts who um, may not be as proficient in the management of this population, then that certainly accelerates learning curve. And then we can think about psychotherapy with the most robust evidence to date being available for cognitive behavioral therapy. In a nutshell, cognitive behavioral therapy is a guided exploration between the patient and the psychotherapist to explore potential relationships between their physical symptoms, specifically in this case, their abnormal movements, thought patterns, behaviors, emotions, and life factors. Again, looking for any particular relationships that may lead to symptom amplification or the perpetuation of their specific symptoms. So interesting. I mean, there are so many gaps really in this sort of field, right? I mean, I think you, you mentioned it, Catherine, that a lot of the patients that when they come in, sometimes they don't feel like they're fully heard. They get sort of confusing sort of um, pictures when they leave. I think neurologists and I think physicians in general feel quite uncomfortable sometimes in addressing some of these um, care needs. And so I think education and empowerment both at the physician level as well as the patient level is so key. So um, how are you guys working towards um, addressing these gaps and uh, what are the gaps maybe um, in, in this sort of field? Yeah, thank you for this question. And, and as you were kind of pointing to, I think the biggest gap is really the dissemination of knowledge at this point. I would say that our field in general has really in the past decade seen a lot of progress in understanding if indeed better on a scientific level, uh, developing treatments. But unfortunately, as someone who has uh, started uh, in the past several years, two different treatment programs, uh, I've seen the, the very kind of dire need of uh, patients being referred from all over the country, you know? So um, we have uh, decided to help address this problem by really partnering with many, many great specialists from multiple disciplines, psychiatrists, uh, we have specialists, neurologists, and uh, put together a treatment manual for functional movement disorders so we'll kind of link that in show notes it's an interdisciplinary case-based approach with um, lots of practical tips and, and knowledge so i think that everyone uh whether a physician whether um, any healthcare position uh, uh professional in the mental health sphere we have a sphere will find this a very um useful and practical guide uh, towards helping these patients and then the second sort of gap is is as you were kind of mentioning you know kind of a destigmatization of these disorders. And I think people, unfortunately, often make a lot of negative experiences with the healthcare system, uh, whether it is going to the emergency room and being perceived as uh, someone who might be malingering or drug seeking, uh, whether it is to really find a, a physician who is um, willing to not just um, diagnose them or see them one time, but kind of be um, longitudinally invested in the care. Uh, so yeah, again, I think uh, educating like we're doing today, you know, just talking about the importance of FND is very important. And then there's certainly more resources um, available for those uh, who want to uh, take a deeper dive. So great. It's, you guys have done so much work, so many publications, lots of hard work. So kudos to you. Um, so where can neurologists and these other kind of allied health professionals um, kind of learn more? Um, are there meetings? Are there ways that they can interact with each other? Tell me a little bit more about that, maybe, David. Sure. Maybe just add, it's an exciting time in the field. And as we've pointed out today, um, functional neurological disorder and functional movement disorders as a subtype, highly prevalent. We're seeing this as neurologists across outpatient, inpatient, and emergency department settings. There is now a new professional society, the Functional Neurological Disorder Society, and it has its uh, inaugural meeting in Boston, June 19th to the 21st. It, it has both in-person and um, virtual capabilities. It's a multidisciplinary professional society, really cutting across the clinical neurosciences and the rehabilitation specialists. 
uh, Catherine and I have been very involved in the society and we really um, uh, use this opportunity as a time to invite others to join us and to join this very collaborative and multidisciplinary international community. So we can really think comprehensively about um, the best management strategies for uh, functional logical disorder, identify the gaps and move forward uh, collaboratively. So you're trying to attract, it sounds like neurologists, movement disorder specialists or epilepsy docs, people like that. Um, it sounds like psychiatrists, psychologists, rehab specialists from OT, speech therapy, um, uh, physical therapy. Um, anyone I missed? Who else are you guys trying to hopefully come? Social workers and really anyone who's um, uh, interested in this population, encountering this population clinically, research scientists as well. Um, it's both a clinical professional society and a research-based society. So we're looking for all interested comers. Awesome. Well, that's amazing. Great work, you guys. So timely. Uh, we're just seeing this explosion, as we said, of ticks in this sort of space disseminated through social media. Maybe as a last question, why do you think that's happening in, in, in this COVID timeframe? Um, this was highlighted at the AN. Maybe, Catherine, I could just ask you that. Yeah, so, you know, not a simple answer for this. So just to kind of, so what you're referring to was a uh, phenomenon of what was also dubbed as TikTok uh, ticks. And we actually did an interview on that during the last day and meeting. Um, uh, so that's probably available still in Medscape to view uh, for more details. But, uh, you know, uh, social isolation during the pandemic, uh, many psychological stress factors during the pandemic have uh, um, been thought to make especially young adults more vulnerable uh, to functional neurological disorders. And there's a poten potential phenomenon of social contagion, meaning seeing other people on via social media with um, abnormal movements and, and kind of uh, having that as a modeling um, effect. But uh, again, the, it's, it's a complex topic and certainly more to learn. And, and uh, again, many, many any uh, papers now available for, for more details. Uh, yeah, thanks again. And uh, again, join us in Boston. We'll, we'll join David. It'll be a wonderful meeting, very hands-on, very practical. And uh, yeah, we hope to, to connect with many people interested in this field. Thank you so much, both of you, for your time and amazing knowledge. Thank you very much. Thank you.